Hey, Corn. If you're talking, we can't hear you. Hey, everybody. So um, I'll go ahead and get started with the news for today through the rest of the week. So um, yesterday we got core and regular durable good orders. Um, those numbers came in good. Consumer confidence was a miss. Um, that wasn't a big surprise given that um, the last time we talked about consumer confidence numbers, we talked about the fact that um, we needed another stimulus. People needed to feel secure about the future and um, there's not a whole lot to just feel secure about right now. So that just wasn't a huge surprise. And if things continue the way that they are now, then um, I wouldn't doubt that the next consumer confidence number will be a miss also. We need a vaccine or to have a vaccine that's in trials currently get approved for distribution. The election is going to be over next week. Oh, well, the actual voting period for elections is going to be over next Tuesday, but the ballot counting could potentially go on for a while. So um, once all of that's over, once we have a vaccine, once we have a stimulus package, consumer confidence numbers will go up. Those are the things right now that are just really causing a lot of volatility in the market. And we know that volatility in the market is just essentially people being emotional. Um, today in the news, we had um, Canada's rate decision. It wasn't a big surprise that Canada didn't change their rates. Um, I'm not expecting any of these currencies to change their rates anytime soon because as we talked about several months ago, you have to pretty much get through the period of figuring out whether or not the stimulus worked. Um, and once that time period is up, then governments will be more willing to reassess whether or not they need to do something else with the interest rates. But right now with most economies, most governments are in a wait and see type um, stance when it comes to their interest rates. Um, still waiting the um, Bank of Japan rate decision, not expecting a change from the Bank of Japan, um, but you never know, it's Japan. And like I said, they are teetering on the verge of not being a safe haven. However, considering the moves that the Bank of Japan has made in the recent past, as with other governments, I'm not expecting them to change their rate. I'm expecting them to keep it the same. So we have a press conference for the Bank of Japan. Um, it's listed for tomorrow, but it's just tentative. Um, it'll, we'll actually get a time about an hour or so before um, the press conference actually happens. Tomorrow, like I was telling you guys on Monday, we have GDP news, unemployment claims, pending home sales, and um, just with all the extra volatility and volatility in the market, these things are just going to be super important, way more important than normal. Um, one thing I will say is that the markets as a whole were really due for a correction if we didn't get a, um, a vaccine or stimulus package. Because remember when I was telling you guys about the markets before, I was telling you guys that um, there was a lot of optimism baked in. The markets were super hopeful. There were times in the market where we would get bad news. Like I remember several weeks ago, I was telling you guys, the worse the news, the better the markets move. The markets moved up like hundreds of points off of bad news. And that's because the market just kept being hopeful that we were going to get a vaccine, that we were going to get a stimulus package. And now that we don't have either of those things, now the market's kind of coming back down to reality. Well, these news items that are coming out tomorrow, um, whether they're good or bad, the market still has a lot of fear in it right now. So these numbers could be amazing and you could get a wick out of it because the market still has a lot of fear 
about um, the election, we only have, um, if you're counting tomorrow as a whole day, four business days um, to the election. And if you're counting the election day itself. So um, it's a countdown period. Next week is NFP. You're thinking about jobs numbers. You're thinking about economic growth. You're thinking about, well, we're not gonna get a stimulus package. So the market is thinking about a whole lot of things right now. And regardless of whether or not these numbers are good or bad, the market's still gonna move off of emotion. This is one of those times where um, we don't always talk about sentiment. We don't talk about the sentimental elements of the market, but this is when that really takes over. Sentiment will blow fundamentals and it will blow technicals every time because the thing about sentiment is it's, it's emotion. You don't know, you can't predict emotion. Um, what you can, well, let me go back. You can sort of predict the emotion and which way the market's going to go based off the news. So if the news is harping on something very negative, that's going to put a lot of fear in the market. The market's talking about we could possibly get a stimulus package. We could possibly get a vaccine. That's greed. That's going to cause people to pump their money into the market, hoping that the market's going to continue to go up. So um, just pay attention to those news items. If you plan on being in anything, USD, indices, silver, gold, energy, just pay attention to the market because it's a possibility that if there's still a lot of fear in the market in the morning, that if these news items are good, you can get a huge wick to the upside and then the market can continue to sell off. Um, or the market can sell off right before these news items come out and then they're good and then the market just shoots up. Um, it's not uncommon to have market weeks where the market just sells off almost every day. So don't feel like just because we've been selling off in the market for two or three days now that the market's going to turn around and buy because the market does what it wants to do and the market right now, as I said, is governed by, strongly by emotion. Um, also tomorrow morning, we have um, ECB conference. We have their main refinancing rate in the morning. A lot of these things are important um, for reasons we've talked about already. Um, economic growth, debt repayment, Brexit, like all of these things kind of feed in and have their place. So with the EU and with um, the GBP, they're um, hand in hand a lot of times when we're talking about some of these issues. Um, so just pay attention to those numbers for the EU in the morning. And Friday, we have preliminary um, GDP news from Germany. We have news from the Swiss regarding their um, economic barometer, where they foresee their economy being. That includes their interest rates, that includes how they choose to treat their currency, um, how they choose to leverage their currency, and then how they choose to, or how they will choose to operate their banking system going forward. Um, so that news will be out 4 a.m. on Friday morning, followed by Canadian GDP news, and then we have personal spending, the PCE price index, Chicago PMI, um, and then consumer sentiment numbers. So the US news does not just end tomorrow when it comes to like how heavy it can be. Friday, we do have quite a bit of heavy news and news that is just going to show um, where the economy is at this point in time. These consumer sentiment, consumer confidence numbers, personal spending numbers, those numbers are really going to show how the people feel, not businesses, not industry, not the stores. That's not showing inflation. It's just showing pure thought process of the people. And personal spending is showing thought process of the people because, as we've said before, if people are willing to spend, they feel like they're going to have income coming in. They feel secure about money. If people are not spending, then they don't feel secure. They don't feel like money is going to be coming in. When people spend money, economy grows. When people don't spend, economy shrinks. 
and we want an, an economy at this point in time that's growing. Um, we've been growing fairly rapidly, but we still want to maintain some sort of consistent pace of growth um, within our economy. So we'll be paying attention to all of those things. A um, couple of other things that just aren't on the Forex factory calendar, COVID. Um, we've had spikes in 30 plus states um, of just cases. Some people will say it's because we're testing more, um, but if you look at how many tests are out there, if you look at um, when they fully implemented rapid testing and you know the consistency of the testing cycle that we're in now, it's not new. So in my opinion, this is a new flare up of COVID. Um, other countries aren't taking this lightly. I just got off the phone with one of my friends, like they're in Italy, they're on lockdown. Germany's on lockdown. Um, the UK is going back to a stricter um, set of guidelines for being out. So a lot of other countries are not taking this lightly. Why, wouldn't, why would we not do the same thing at this point in time? Because we're right upon an election. What official who is trying to get their seat back or who's trying to stay in their seat, what official is going to say, well, we need to go back to phase one or we need to go back to lockdown? No, no one at this point in time. So um, this is where I always tell you guys, you got to think about um, like know, know the news, know how it affects you, but also know how it affects who and what the news is talking about. Because um, even though these are elected officials who you know, are supposed to be protecting you, they're also trying to protect their seat, trying to protect their income. They don't wanna get voted out solely because um, they wanted to try to save lives by going back to a stricter lockdown or set of rules about how to treat COVID. We're also in flu season or the beginning of flu season now. So um, a lot of people are going to have symptoms of something and are more likely to get tested. So in some sense, you could say, yeah, we're testing a little bit more, but rapid testing is not new. It's been around, it's been out for months now. Um, the type of testing that they're doing for COVID has been out, it's been around. So, um, don't let the news fool you, like know these things um, because they'll try to make it seem like it's something brand new to try to pull the wool over your eyes. But whenever you realize these things, that's when you'll start to look around the world and say, well, they're protecting their citizens. Why aren't we? Um, and it's because of stuff like that that we never ask our officials the right questions and never press them in the ways that they should be pressed. So um, just keep COVID in mind. They've had, I think, a vaccine that they're, uh, um, that has been approved by the FDA. Can't remember the company, can't remember the type of vaccine that it is, um, but they still don't think even with the approval that it'll be ready before Valentine's Day. So, um, just keep all that in mind, pay attention to all that stuff in the news, um, the restrictions and the lockdown measures have affected oil, like when we look at the oil chart, you'll see oil's been dropping, you know, a lot of these things that we were talking about earlier in the year, like in March and April, those same conversations that we were having then are now com coming back up, how oil is going to be affected, how travels um, and the travel industry is being affected. So, you know, a lot of these jobs that were being in industries that were being hurt at the beginning of the year are being targeted again, solely because of COVID resurgence. So um, keep all that in mind when you're watching the news, when you're looking at the Forex factory calendar, when you're planning out your trades. And um, that's all I have for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Lovell so that he can get started with the technicals.